Welcome to Up at Noon, your weekly pop culture variety comedy show here on IGN. I'm Pardon. Brian Altano. That's Max Scoville. Uh, almost. Almost got the what? <laughs> <laughs> You're excited. What? Why are you so excited today? <laughs> Max has per uh, perma hiccups, which is the new disease which only causes you <laughs> to make hiccup noises <laughs> very often and frequently. <laughs> Speaking of things that have been interrupting my life, here's a short film we made that will now <laughs> interrupt <laughs> yours. How much is how much is this thing? No, Do you know? Don't. Okay, I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> I thought you were. I thought this was your baby. I forgot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you did doing your homework on the bus. Uh, just so you know, that's the opening of the video. Okay. Hey everybody, Max and Brian here, and we've got a great new collectible courtesy of First Four Figures. This is the Samus Aran Various Suit figure from Metroid Prime 2? Two. Two? Yeah, Two? Echoes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, running the long-standing tradition of some of the best sort of collectible Samus-themed merchandise is uh, mostly from the games that, like, I don't know, are, are not the worst necessarily, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll straight up say that Metroid Prime 2 is the worst of the Metroid Prime trilogy, not counting pinball. But her costume's really cool, uh, and here it is. Now this is four hundred eighty dollars. Says here it's five dollars. I don't think that's legit. Oh, <laughs> I think it's really? eBay. <laughs> that's great. Giving these things away. They spelled this price wrong. It's actually four hundred eighty-nine dollars. What do you mean they spelled the price wrong? Well, when you write five dollars, but you mean to write five hundred dollars, you spelled it wrong. It's very well constructed. Uh, I think the paint is fantastic. The sculpt is awesome, and it's really only three pieces, right? What is the? F 1,500 pieces, okay. This, this is 1,500 pieces? I think it's only one. And then the base. There's the base, there's Samus, with a, she's got like a, a peg in her leg, or her foot, and then her, uh, her blaster comes off. Yeah. And so that's it, that's actually very, that gives me anxiety. There's not really much to talk about with statues, aside from this, it lights up, it's full of LEDs. This um, is, Amazing. Yeah, now First 4 does a lot of stuff that has like kind of gimmicky things to it Like we saw a Metal Gear that has like a rotating ammo box. Sometimes things light up a little bit uh, In this case, I think it really works like yeah. having having LEDs throughout the entire statue is phenomenal This yeah. is limited to 1500 pieces 489.99 uh, They make lots of cool video game stuff So keep an eye on that and yeah. if you're looking for something smaller in the yeah, Samus department So you know a little smaller scale stuff. This is the Figma um, This is based on other M once again continuing that strange tradition of like not not necessarily the best Samus game. This is Metroid, right? Yeah. Is that her name? That's what I'm saying. But uh, a, a cool toy nonetheless. Um, yeah, super posable here. This one actually count, comes with a bunch of different hands and accessories and, and parts you can swap in and out. This is a few years uh, old too, and that's yeah. why the legs are constantly falling off. Yeah, it's a little rickety. Now, if you want something that will never fall apart, uh, there is this right here, which is the Amiibo. This was released with um, Metroid Oopsies. Prime when it came How to embarrassing. Metroid when it came to yeah. Can't have a one-legged bounty hunter. Just where, uh, hopping around the galaxy. Uh oh. I hope Brian's not mad I broke his toy. I like it when she fights all those little moth guys and the mother brain. And then Metroid saves the day. I wonder what a Metroid tastes like. I wonder if Brian will get mad if I say that I like that. Nintendo merchandise I've ever seen. It's very nice. Yeah, they're doing a bunch of other stuff coming up too. Uh, they're doing like a. If you finish Super Metroid in under three hours, you see Samus in a bikini. If we finish this unboxing in under three hours, I wonder who we'll see in a bikini. No, 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 not that, not that. Everybody else. For all things video games, Samus, and everything else, you're already in the right place. Metroid. Metroid. And we're back. Max has been miraculously healed, and that's great news. How are you? I'm all better. I'm feeling sort of normal once again, once more. I was, I was talking to them. I was seeing oh. how they're doing. Okay, well, I know. I'm... You're here. I, I don't get to see them often. What if I left, though? The final season of Game of Thrones is lumbering along and millions of folks are tuning in every Sunday night to find out which beloved character is getting stabbed in the head or having a body part ripped off or who's going to take off their clothes and passionately f*** one of their relatives in a barn. Well, a whole bunch of food and beverage brands out there got wind of Game of Thrones popularity and thought, 
how can we cash in on the other appetites of this sex and violence loving audience? Let's grade their attempts, shall we? For years now, there's been Game of Thrones craft beer courtesy of Brewery Amagong, an American company that produces small batches of Belgian-style ales, porters, stouts, and so on, because these hearty, old-timey brews seem like the kind of thing you'd see Braun or the Hound knocking back on the show in some messed-up tavern before they kill a bunch of people. Game of Thrones beer, A+. But what about the fancy folks, the Circes and the Tyrians? Well, for about as long, there's also been Game of Thrones wine, which is very fitting considering how much vino gets guzzled on screen every week. Winemaker Bob Cabral produced several vintages of this Game of Thrones inspired wine, though it's a little hard to track down and it's unclear how readily available it is. Game of Thrones wine, B+, but only for not having as much of a variety as the beer folks. Make a nice House Martell themed Sauve Blanc and we can talk. Beer, beautiful. Wine, wonderful. Well, what about whiskey? Well, Johnny Walker jumped right on that and they did their homework, making a limited edition White Walker, Johnny Walker themed blend that had a White Walker bottle that has a hidden winner is here message on it when it's cold. Brand synergy. However, I can't help but feel that it would have been cooler to see it come in some kind of medieval fantasy looking wizard's bottle. We got that futuristic Blade Runner 2049 Johnny Walker. Where's the fantasy version? A for effort, solid B for execution. Though I might change my mind if you send us a bottle, the address is All right, all right, we got the beer, the wine, the whiskey, but what about the Mountain Dew? Well, the company sent out a bunch of limited edition color changing cans like this one, which apparently the message, a can has no name kind of went with this. You can see there's the people she's trying to kill on the can. That's all very cute, but let's dig into this. Mountain Dew is fine. It's been a staple of the D&D crowd for generations, but at face value, it seems weirdly anachronistic and out of place pairing it with the HBO show. And furthermore, there's a character named the mountain. So like, couldn't they have done something with that? And as for the practical application, I lived on Mountain Dew when I was 19. But if I drink a Mountain Dew at 9 p.m. on a Sunday night when I'm watching Game of Thrones, I'm gonna throw my entire sleep schedule off for a week because I'm gonna go out in the yard and start practicing knife tricks until one o'clock in the morning. And then I'd be sleepy all week. So anyway, technically the Mountain Dew isn't actually for sale, so I'm gonna give them an incomplete. Now, moving on. All of those beverages you can sort of kind of justify, but what about Oreos. You know, Milk's favorite cookie, that family-friendly, dunkable, cream-filled treat. Well, they buddied up with our favorite incest and murder-filled show, making a bunch of house-themed Oreos in limited edition packaging and remaking the show's intros with said cookies. But, like, what the f***? Aside from how hilariously inappropriate this is, do they even have chocolate in the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros? Oreo gets an F. Cookies are pretty weird, but somehow not quite as weird as Shake Shack's Game of Thrones themed menu, which features the Dracaris burger and Dragon Glass shake. It honestly sounds delicious. It's a double bacon cheeseburger with Monterey Jack and spicy sauce, and a mint and white chocolate custard shake with Dragon Glass toffee shards. But just the nerd in me finds it dumb as hell. Can you picture anyone in Game of Thrones eating a hamburger and drinking a shake? However, the menu is in Valerian and they make you order it like that, so they did their homework and that brings Shake Shack up to a C plus. It would be higher, but there are none in my area and the lines are too long whenever I travel. Sorry, maybe I'm overthinking things, but when I'm watching this serious fantasy HBO show for adults, I'm in the zone. I want themed snacks and drinks. There's entire scenes on that show that revolve around rustic meat pies and rotisserie chickens. Where the f was Boston Market when everyone was jumping on the Game of Thrones bandwagon? Anyway, what are you guys eating and or drinking when you watch this epic show reach its bonkers conclusion? Share your fray pie recipes in the comments, and for the love of God, no spoilers. Well, hey everyone, we that would... What are you doing? Hello everybody, Max and Brian here. We're here with Raphael from Paper Cult Games showing off a new game called Blood Roots. Yeah. It has lots of violence in it. You can kill people in creative ways. Tell us about that, please. So yeah, we really wanted to recreate the flow of being Jackie Chan. That's the main inspiration. So just like Jack Chan would do, you can like pick up a ladder, start spinning it, then double jump with it while climbing it, landing your foot in a pot, throwing it at somebody. So it's really a fast paced action pretty brutal, you die in one punch, people also die in one punch. So I want to speed around through some of the things that you can kill people with in this game. Yep. Uh, number one, a big ass carrot. Yeah, the carrot is pretty massive in uh, Blood Roots. It's heavy. It has a lot of uh, a lot of swing to Some it. Some oomph. Yeah, exactly. What about a banana? 
There's a banana also hidden somewhere in the game. A hidden banana. I like the sound of that. <laughs> eggs? There's eggs in the game. Really? <laughs> I just guessed that one. What about fish? There's a couple of fish, actually. There's a swordfish. There's smaller, like, trout fish. There's a variety of fishes. Are there nunchucks? Oh. <laughs> It's set in America in the 18th century. Is there, Why would there be? How do you know they didn't have I'm nunchucks kidding, back kidding. then? They might have had nunchucks back then. There couldn't be nunchucks in this. Is there a pink flamingo? There's a pink flamingo. You're right there. How on earth did I guess that? It's almost <laughs> as though we've been speaking before we turned the yeah. cameras on. Yeah. Uh, can you kill a guy with one of those like weird haystacks that only has two wheels and they tie to the horse's butt? Uh, well, you can a light. wagon? A wagon, yeah. doesn't a wagon. work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you kill a guy with you a wagon? You got on this one. <laughs> you can peel, uh, kill people with a wagon mm -hmm. and then take off a wheel, skate on it uh, like uh, Legolas would do in Lord of the Ring. Like, uh, we wanted to have like a really good pacing, so we introduced like about three to four new weapons per level. And also we always like throw new stuff at the player, new obstacles, new enemies. The, the, the environment always change. And we also uh, like uh, throw some random stuff to change the pacing of the game. So at some point, the camera shifts and you have a little segment that turns into a, a 2D platformer that comes out of nowhere. So we have, we're always trying to keep the player on the edge of their seat. I like it. <laughs> so it's a little bit isometric and then it'll flip it around and it gets you know, sideways and exactly, stuff? Exactly, exactly. What about a rake? Stuff. Can you kill somebody with a rake? There's a rake in the game. <laughs> I think it's cool. That's a fairly mundane weapon, I feel like, in the, in the you know, the Canadian wilderness for rakes. <laughs> Ray weapon. That's pretty straightforward. They I don't just know. leave them everywhere? Yeah. I don't know. That it. seems kind of in brand with the whole, like, Looney Tunes, like, violence. You step mm -hmm. on the rake. Can you step on a rake and hurt yourself? Yeah, no. Okay. That would be, uh, yeah. We had bear traps. We have, we still have a bear trap, but like at first you could walk on it and it would kill you. But it wasn't fun. So there is definitely a theme of animals, and you, you play as sort of like a trapper who's out for revenge. Exactly. There's a story going on. At first uh, you you get killed uh, by a group of people, and then uh, you, you try to go back in each act and find one of those those bosses and kill them to go to the other one. But the story the story starts up pretty like a basic uh, revenge revenge plot, but uh, then it, it evolves into uh, something else. Hmm. Something deeper. Well, I'm excited to hear more about that. Thank Are there dogs? There's my dog in it. Your dog? dog's in the game? He's a hat. Oh. What? <laughs> well, I you guess. You can wear him? Yeah, I know. What do the hats do in the game? Uh, they change your behavior, so it's, you, you can unlock them while you play. Uh, when you get some certain scores, so it's a it's a good reason to come back at the levels and play them to unlock you. Yeah. And the yeah, whole thing yeah. is sort of score based and ti like time attack. Exactly, we have leaderboards for the score and also for the the, the the time attack. So like you can compete for score or for the fastest. What about laser gun? There's so a laser gun you? in that game. There's, There's a, a laser, laser gun. gun? See, this is why I ask the questions. You laser saying, What's wrong with you? <laughs> There's a laser gun. This is why I do journalism. <laughs> Thank you. What am I doing? Laser gun. I don't know. Hanging out. I guess. <laughs> well, anyway, thanks for hanging out. When uh, when can we hang out with Bloodroots? Uh, it's gonna come out this summer at some point. That's a good answer. Anyway, Bloodroots. Keep an eye on it. It's violent. You can kill people with a carrot, a fish, a banana, a flamingo, a rake, a turkey, all sorts of things. And I'm dying to see what else there is. And a laser gun. Thank a laser you, gun. And the weird car with two wheels that ties to the horse's butt. The wagon. The wagons. <laughs> yes. Thanks for watching. Keep it here on IGN. You need to put your phone in a Doritos bag and go in the elevator. You gotta get naked and steal somebody's clothes from a hotel. I saw it in a Will Smith movie. That's how that works. What does bears love to eat? F***ing everything. We, Give them anything they not, want. We're not just talking about bears. What? You've been talking about bears for like 10 minutes. I thought that's what the commercial was for. No, we're doing different ones. Oh, really? Different yeah. Thanks for watching the show. Check out more Up at Noon at upatnoon.ign.com, a full website to a whole, remember. A whole website for one little teeny tiny show that goes up once a week. If you want more of this, please just spread it around and tell your friends and leave a comment and just, I don't, just do everything you can I'm to try to just here. help just fan the flames of this little just sparking ember of a, of a dream that was once a wish. Uh, That's right. Yeah, we love making the show here at IGN, um, and it's always a good time. If you have any ideas for fun stuff you want to see us do on this show, or more slimes that we should order, because we love the slime, it's a really good one, then you should uh, let us know. Tweet us. Uh, that I'm at Agent Bizzle, and he's at Max Scoville. You can hit us up on the internet. Yeah. We'll talk to you online. Use the computer to make more friends. It's better than yelling. That's right. On that note, we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. We love you, and goodbye. Have a great night. Or, or the Whatever day. time it is. I don't care. Care. Uh,